Welcome to this Pearl of Laboratory Medicine brought to you by AACC and the Clinical Chemistry Trainee Council. View this and many more pearls as well as other free educational material at traineecouncil.org. Hi, my name is Dr. Dodd Adcock. I am currently the Chief Medical Officer and Senior Vice President of LabCorp Diagnostics. Welcome to this Pearl of Laboratory Medicine on Direct Oral Anticoagulants, an Introduction. This program was created with Bob Goslin from the Thrombosis and Hemostasis Center at the University of California, Davis Health System. This session is a joint effort between the American Association for Clinical Chemistry and the North American Specialized Coagulation Laboratory Association. Oral anticoagulation is administered for the treatment of thrombosis. The late term for thrombus is clot, or it is used prophylactically for a patient at risk for thrombosis in order to prevent clot formation. The most common oral anticoagulant administered is warfarin, a vitamin K antagonist. Coumadin and Jantavin are brand names. Warfarin functions as an anticoagulant by reducing the amount of functional vitamin K-dependent procoagulant factors, specifically factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. It also causes functional levels of anticoagulant proteins, such as protein C and protein S, to decrease. Limitations of warfarin are that full anticoagulant effect requires a number of days of therapy. Also, patients on warfarin must undergo episodic monitoring. And furthermore, warfarin interacts with many foods as well as medications, which may either increase or decrease its anticoagulant effect. Given warfarin's limitations, there was a goal to develop an oral anticoagulant that is not affected by diet and that does not require routine monitoring. The first such agent developed was zymelagatran, an oral direct thrombin inhibitor, but this was pulled from the market due to liver toxicity. The next agent to come to market was dabigatran, another oral direct anti-2A or thrombin inhibitor. Dabigatran was approved for use in 2010 for stroke prevention in non-valvular atrial fibrillation, or NVAF, which is an abnormal heart rhythm due to a heart valve problem. Now, there are four other FDA-approved direct oral anticoagulants, also known as DOACs. These are rivaroxaban, apixaban, edoxaban, and batrixaban. These last four all target activated factor 10. This cartoon of the coagulation cascade demonstrates the various targets for anticoagulant agents and depicts the laboratory testing pathways, drug, and assay targets. The currency or dollar bill shown in the common pathway represents a simple trick to remember those factors in this pathway and their order of reactions, 10, 5, 2, and 1. Factor 1 is also known as fibrinogen. Both direct 10A inhibitors and direct thrombin inhibitors can potentially cause prolongation of the APTT, PT, and Russell's Viper Venom Time, or DRVVT, as they inhibit factors within these pathways. Direct 10A inhibitors, however, will not affect the thrombin time, dilute thrombin time, or Ekron methods. Session 4 will go into more detail about tests outlined here, which may be affected by DOAC presence. I would like to review the definition of a number of terms that will be used in this and following presentations. Venous thromboembolism, VTE, represents clots within veins, most commonly known as deep vein thrombosis, DVT, and pulmonary embolism, PE. Pharmacokinetics represents drug concentration after administration, whereas pharmacodynamics is the drug effect after administration. Peak levels, the maximum drug concentration after administration. Trough levels, the drug level just before the next drug dose. And therapeutic range, the recommended target drug effect, usually either a concentration or a test effect such as INR in the presence of warfarin therapy. Let's compare and contrast the characteristics of warfarin and direct oral anticoagulant agents, beginning with their mechanism of action. 
Warfarin is a vitamin K antagonist that requires days to reach therapeutic range, while DOACs are direct factor inhibitors that require only several hours to reach desired level of anticoagulation. Warfarin dose is variable, and there is significant inter-individual variability. While DOACs are administered based on a fixed dose, dependent on indication. Warfarin requires frequent and episodic monitoring to assure maintenance in the desired therapeutic range, but this is not required with DOAX. Warfarin dosing must be predicated based on daily vitamin K intake, such as the intake of leafy green vegetables, while DOAC dosing is not affected by diet. Although rivaroxaban and patrixaban are taken with food to increase absorption. Finally and significantly, there is less risk for serious hemorrhage with DOAX as compared to warfarin. Dabigatran, which is administered as dabigatran atexalate, brand name Pradaxa, is an oral direct thrombin inhibitor, which is immediate acting with peak concentration one and a half to three hours after administration. It inhibits free and bound thrombin, also known as activated factor two. Dabigatran is primarily excreted by the kidneys and has a half-life of about 13 hours. The current FDA-approved indications for dabigatran are stroke prevention in non-valvular atrial fibrillation, treatment of DVT in PE, the secondary prevention of VTE, and thromboprophylaxis after knee or hip surgery. Rivaroxaban, brand name Xarelto, is an oral direct factor 10A inhibitor, immediate acting with peak concentrations about two to three hours after ingestion. Increased absorption is noted with food intake. Rivaroxaban inhibits both free and bound activated factor 10 and is excreted primarily through the kidneys. Drug half-life is approximately 2 to 13 hours and is dependent on renal function. The current FDA-approved indications for rivaroxaban are stroke prevention and nonvalvular atrial fibrillation, treatment of DVT and or PE, the secondary prevention of VTE and thromboprophylaxis after knee or hip surgery. Apixaban, brand name Eliquis, is an oral direct factor 10A inhibitor, immediate acting with peak concentrations about three to four hours after ingestion. Apixaban inhibits both free and bound activated factor 10 and is excreted primarily through the feces. Drug half-life is approximately 12 hours. The current FDA-approved indications for apixaban are stroke prevention and non-valvular atrial fibrillation, treatment of DVT and or PE, the secondary prevention of VTE and thromboprophylaxis after knee or hip surgery. Edoxaban, brand name Savayasa, is an oral direct 10A inhibitor, immediate acting with peak concentrations about one to two hours after ingestion. Edoxaban inhibits both free and bound activated factor 10, and about 50% is excreted through the kidneys. Drug half-life is approximately 12 hours. The FDA-approved indications for edoxaban are stroke prevention and nonvalvular atrial fibrillation and treatment of DVT and PE. The newest DOAC to be approved is batrixaban, brand name Bevixa. It is an oral direct 10A inhibitor, and it is only FDA-approved for VTE prophylaxis in acutely ill hospitalized patients. Its anticoagulant effect is immediate acting, and it should be taken with food. Like other direct 10A inhibitors, it inhibits both free and bound factor 10A with peak concentrations about three to four hours after ingestion. Clearance is primarily through feces, and drug half-life is approximately 20 hours. In summary, there are currently five FDA-approved DOACs for use as an alternative to Coumadin for long-term anticoagulation. These DOACs are only approved for adult patients, but pediatric clinical trials are underway, as well as adult trials for DOAC use in cancer patients. The performance characteristics of each DOAC 
and their effect on laboratory testing will be explored in future sessions. Thank you for your attendance. For more like this, as well as articles, podcasts, and more, please visit the Trainee Council at traineecouncil.org.